can start. Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> well, we know each other now, but I'm going to introduce myself again, maybe for the, the record. Um, so I'm Victor Mesters. Uh, I study architecture in Paris. And I joined uh, Rotor, which is a. Uh, uh, no, it's a uh, lab. So um, I'm working with Rotor, which is a collaborative design practice based in Brussels and founded in uh, 2005. Um, we investigate the question of uh, material economy in the construction and industry and uh, specialize on the question of uh, obsolescence, reuse. And behind this title, From Spolia to Opalis, um, I'm going to talk about one specific project uh, at Rotor, which is Opalis. Maybe more human than materials. So this is Rotor, as I show you this morning. Uh, the, the five activities, main activities we got uh, at the, the office. So we are doing some design projects like interior design, some uh, consultancy for clients who want to implement, reuse uh, practice in their project, um, exhibition, lectures, and teaching, like today I'm with uh, the students of uh, the School of Art Decoratif in Paris, and research, like uh, uh, how to um, implement, reuse practice in a public tender, or uh, who are the actors involved in the reuse industry. And one of these uh, research projects is called the Rotor Deconstruction, which is a, a cooperative specialized in the dismantling and the processing, cleaning of uh, second-hand materials that we're selling in, in Brussels. So you know everything about uh, Rotor now. Um, and tonight I'm gonna talk about one specific project from uh, the research uh, team, which is Opalis. But first, before uh, talking about it, let's go 5,000 years ago. Um, when you read archeo archeological uh, studies around reuse, you found that uh, five, so in the Neolithic, the stone from St Stone Age were stones reused from another place. And when you, you study also some uh, research on the reuse uh, from the archeological uh, studies in uh, antiquity, uh, you find many, many um, documents talking about this practice in the Roman Empire. At that time, it was called spolia. Um, spolia, in, uh, in uh, the singular of spolia is polium. It means peeling off the skin of, uh, of uh, beast and so it was one of the practi practice of reuse was an expression of uh, power like the spoil of victory when they attack the city and take and go back with the with the stones that they they reclaim and as you can see on this picture every beams are different and so it's beams coming from a uh, uh, pillar sorry uh, different uh, places there's also uh, some practice for uh, historical continuity. This is the Ark of Adrian uh, in uh, Rome. And you can see that some emperor reclaim uh, decoration element and turn the story from they set themselves as an, as an uh, a continuity. Um, there was also some opportunities uh, of uh, reclaiming elements. So we find uh, that in Pompeii, uh, a lot of uh, uh, bar counters were made with marble pieces from the demolition or the construction of the, of the, the area. There was also the existing of a reuse market. So uh, we find some documents showing that uh, uh, some advertising for uh, this kind of uh, roof tiles that the, the Tegula and selling uh, second hand ones. There was also the existing of uh, a legislation on uh, reuse, like what happens if there is an earthquake and your uh, roof falls down to your neighbors, who is the owner of the tiles? 
the, the, the guy who got the buildings or the, the owner of the land. Also to prevent the, the, the sacking because uh, some of uh, uh, the construction company could be interesting in, in, in uh, looting or dismantling a building to sell the elements. And more recently, um, in 1879, when we were demolishing a building, you, you will see uh, this kind of advertising, vent pour demolition, so sale for uh, uh, demolition. And uh, the, the person uh, who bought the, the building was in charge of uh, demolishing the, the, the building, but also um, reclaiming the elements. So it, it could be like buying some piece of the building or the whole building itself as a quarrier. So it, this tower in question, in question. And in Paris in 1884, we, we, found, we found some uh, uh, research uh, that show this uh, reclamation yards. Achille Picard was really known because he, he got a huge company and uh, was able to, uh, to dismantle a lot of, uh, and reuse a lot of uh, buildings. Like on the, the front of his uh, yard, you can see this pediment coming from the demolition of the Palais du Louvre after the Commune of Paris. So there was a, a revolution in Paris uh, and the Parisian burned the, 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 the palace of the, of the king. And so he was the only one able to clean the, the, the site in three months and reclaim the, the, the materials. And if you look on the archives, you can find in the early 19th, uh, 20th century, a lot of advertising for the demolition company and they were all selling and buying uh, materials. So like every demolition company was also a provider for uh, second-hand materials, as uh, Achille Picard. More recently, in 1928, this is uh, how it uh, looked like a demolition site. So you can see different uh, um, materials, sort, the wood, the stones, etc. And if you zoom, like you, you can see like uh, there's the, wom wo the wooden beams, etc., and a small panel in the front saying "Materiaux de façade avant," so, so uh, building materials to sell on site. And what we know more about demolition nowadays is this kind of image. Uh, this is a symbolic one in 1972 because it's the demolition of. of uh, modernist uh, buildings and symbolic because it's uh, historian of architecture say this is the end of modernism when we start to demolish this kind of building that was uh, knocked down with uh, dynamite. So we are really far from uh, the practice we saw before. Of course, with um, the evolution of uh, recycling, we are more close to this kind of practice of demolition. So you can see here um, the way we demolish without dynamite, but with this kind of machine. Here is the demolition of Robin Hood Gardens, the brutalism architecture in, Lo in London. Um, and on the right screen, it's the a crushing machine. So the demolition prepare the, the element to be crushed. So that the recycling industry changed the, the way of, of demolishing buildings. But we all know how it could be disappointing the, the, the practice of recycling. And if you look at closely uh, this uh, sample of crushed uh, materials that cost zero euro per ton, um, there was some uh, ceramic tiles, bricks, and um, stones elements that worth uh, seven times the price uh, for some of them on the reuse market. So we understand that by recycling, we use a lot of energy to crush the materials, but we lose also the energy embedded in the materials and the economy and the function of the materials. So, and we, 
we are a bit disappointing about this result because it's we can do much more better. At the same time, the European uh, Commission um, wrote a, a directive to, to put a, a hierarchy on the way of uh, treating the waste from uh, the landfill to the recycling and to, sorry it's in Dutch, but uh, uh, to the reuse practice that is close to, uh, to prevent uh, materials. So it means that reuse practice is not treating waste, but preventing uh, waste. And we are all concerned about this feed news in uh, our Facebook. And uh, every day we saw like uh, news about climate change and the forest burning and uh, from our famous friends. And this is an image of the demolition in 2008, the permit, uh, demolition permit in London in 2008. This is just an extract of uh, a dozen of pages like that. And one of our students uh, um, study all the, the demolition uh, permits to see what kind of building is knocked down every, every year in London. And you can see that there is some really recent buildings and uh, really old buildings. And some of them are like that when they are knock, knocked down. So it's in this context that Rotor uh, start to work. The context of this climate change, the uh, European uh, Commission will start to hierarchy uh, the, the, the waste, the recycling industry, etc. And so this is an image of the people uh, involved in the team. So we're about 20 to 30 people in the two structures, the rotor and rotor deconstruction. And um, some of them are uh, architects, uh, jurists, uh, engineers, scenograph, uh, historian of art. So many different skills uh, because this question of uh, reuse in this contemporary uh, process of construction needs to uh, solve many barriers at, at different levels. And we got a specialization for the question of uh, reclaiming building elements. And so when we start with these questions, um, we took a really uh, pragmatic approach. So we, we start to read all the, the, lec the, the knowledge about it. So there is a an extensive uh, literature on barrier to reuse, uh, very, very extensive. And we uh, note uh, the challenge, the, the lack of vis visibility of the ex existing operators, uh, the cliche, the technical questions, uh, integration in professional practice, how to do it, etc., etc. And we got a really long list of, uh, of questions. But the the question is how to enter in this, uh, in this topic, uh, from which door. So we decide to take a, a really pragmatic approach. So uh, as this project in uh, France, which is uh, the Chateau de Guédelon, uh, some uh, researcher uh, in the history of construction in the 11th century decided to build a castle, a new castle. This castle uh, got uh, uh, was made, uh, the, they started the construction 20 years ago to solve the question about uh, the methodology of construction in the 11th century. So they start, they, they decide to, to create the tools and to build it with the tools uh, as they were uh, doing in the uh, uh, 11th century. So, we did the same thing and uh, we decided to open a uh, deconstruction company, Rotor Deconstruction. So here is the, an image of the showroom uh, in Bruxelles where you can uh, go, it's open to public and buy some tiles and, and uh, sanitary lamps, handlings. This is uh, um, an image of the, the stock. So we stock a lot of elements uh, that we prepare to be sell. So we need to choose the good elements because if we stock too much elements and we don't sell it, it costs a lot of money. Uh, so we're searching for a, a business and actually it's, uh, 
going on uh, and we are selling every every day some uh, building materials and here in the short video you saw some uh, workers dismantling a wooden floor and what kind of building site is it clean uh, precise and uh, care careful uh, skills we understand that uh, the construction needs a lot of uh, effort and a lot of people so uh, the first uh, operation is the extraction of the materials so uh, here you can see a building site and the workers removing the floor uh, tiles um, and the other uh, operation from marble cladding to uh, uh, glassing window uh, partition uh, windows and then you need to transport and to package the, the, the elements. Uh, so this is a second operation to extract the materials and to bring it to the, uh, the building, the, the warehouse. And then you need to process because this tile that you extract uh, come with the, the lime. And so you cannot sell the, the, the materials like that. So you need to find a good way to clean the materials and to prepare it to be a cell uh, again. And then you need to store the materials because when you get a client who got a, a new construction, he want to um, he, he design his building one year before or two or three years before the construction. So someone have to stock the materials in between. So uh, you need to store the materials and to prepare for Package the, the packaging as a new uh, materials, and you also need to document uh, the the information, the quantity, the size. Uh, for instance, for the ceramic tiles, we did some research about the, the pattern that you can have when you use the, the, these tiles. So we discovered that it's mainly pragmatically a logistic approach from uh, for the reclaiming uh, building materials to be back on track. So here are the picture of the, the ties clean and uh, installing a new project. So <coughs> we, disc we, we know that uh, the construction needs time and a lot of people, but it's an opportunity to create local jobs also. Um, we discover also that uh, reuse practice are really more efficient than uh, in terms of uh, energy saving than the new construction. So as you can see in blue is the production process of ceramic and the energy embedded in the, in the new construction. And in blue, in the, the right part, uh, the, the reused one. So we got this uh, diagram showing in with the black dots, uh, the repartition of the, the energy in the process of the of the production of materials so most of the energy are in the extraction and production and the treatment of the waste so if a solar panel was a solution to solve the, the issue of uh, uh, co2 uh, we will uh, not have to work with rotor and it would be uh, much more easy but we discover that maybe it's not that part that we sh we have to look at and change but maybe this part and this part and you understand that when you're reusing your material you avoid this one and also the production of another one but the main issue after that was who is able to do this we did it with rotor deconstruction but every day there is thousands of demolition sites and uh, who is able to uh, take the materials to one place and to clean it to to another place so in this project I want to talk about tonight, uh, Opalis, which uh, was uh, which starts uh, in 2011 uh, in Brussels. So we took another pragmatical approach and decided to uh, visit in a range of uh, 100 kilometers all the company that uh, resell uh, um, building materials. So the, the reuse dealers, and at that time. They were not online on internet. It was like more sous le radar company, uh, uh, like demolition company or uh, dealers, uh, antiquity dealers. 
So we visit this kind of uh, activity. This one is, for instance, he's selling uh, second-hand uh, bricks. Uh, he's able to uh, knock down buildings in the way to reuse materials. So this is uh, 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 one of the building sites much more close to Achille Picard or the, the one we saw before. And then this is um, the, the processing of the materials. So the, the, the workers are knocking the, the, the bricks and if it sounds good, you keep it. If it sounds bad, you throw it. And then they, they, have to, they uh, remain the, the la croûte, the, the lime of the, of the material with a, this kind of tools. They use also this uh, uh, church chair really low because it was like much more easier for them to work. So they have to find the good tools. Um, and he's able also to prepare the, the materials to be sell as a new materials like stock, film, etc. And this kind of reuse dealer is uh, building uh, almost one house every day like that. Uh, the whole industry of reuse uh, element in Brussels this is like just the classical uh, bricks uh, houses, but uh, also able to sell to architect or more, uh, let's say, a press design project. So we visit a lot of them and we discover also that it's mainly SMEs, small activities, small uh, companies like demolition company from many generation. Um, and, uh, they have a, a precious knowledge about the materials that they are selling, and they are really close to the, the field and uh, not di disconnected to the reality of, of, the, of this deconstruction. So for us, it was really precious to have these actors, small company that got the knowledge in the end. We discovered that there was a lot of uh, building materials in this uh, reuse uh, market, so uh, stones, uh, tiles, uh, uh, sanitary, uh, windows, um, uh, office building uh, materials like finishings, uh, wooden floor, bricks. There is not all, the, there is no, you cannot find all the materials, but a lot of one are available. And we decide to start with that, saying, okay, it exists. Flanders say in 2014 that there is no tradition of reuse uh, in, uh, in their. Uh, region and we show that there is uh, more than 100 uh, company dealing with second hand materials every day in, uh, in Belgium. So we decide to, to do uh, um, an online directory to show to everybody, uh, to share with everybody the, this knowledge. So we call it Opalis. Um, so you can find uh, all these uh, dealers, reuse dealers on site like for instance, the one with the, the bricks that we saw. Um, we wrote, uh, inf we give, gave the information that we collect uh, about the, his specialty, his services, uh, what he's able to do, uh, etc., and his contact. Um, and then we go further and we study materials by materials, all the specifications and the requirement for uh, to use one materials in a new construction. So this is like a 20 page of knowledge about reused bricks in different application uh, that you can find online. And we did it for uh, 40 uh, materials, the more common materials that you can find on Opalis. And we reference a lot of project to stimulate also the, the, the clients and to, to show that it's possible to do uh, a facade with uh, reused bricks or um, sanitary or uh, etc. And uh, this month of December, we just finished a three year uh, project, European project, with all of these partners um, to map uh, more than uh, almost a thousand uh, companies. Uh, in uh, north northwestern uh, Europe, so there was a specific there is a specific directory for uh, UK, which is Salvo Web, and the the others are on Opalis, um, and it was a collective approach. So maybe uh, next one could be on the, this that border. Is, yeah. <laughs> 
And I'm sure, like, we found a lot in, in France in every country, close to the cities, but on the countryside. And I'm sure there is a lot in, also in, uh, in uh, Switzerland, in Italy or Germany. And then we decide to show that it's possible to work with this real dealer because, of course, it's not uh, as a provider of new construction. It's a kind of different people. Um, and we did a lot of uh, pilot projects. For instance, this one is in uh, Strasbourg. So we help the city of Strasbourg uh, to reclaim material from the transformation <coughs> the, of uh, a former hospital to a new campus. Um, so it was a, a building like that, um, built in the early 20s with this kind of uh, finishing, the, the framework, wooden frame, and the radiator, etc. And the, we did a, a, a reuse audit on site. In fact, the clients did, and we helped uh, him to, to do it. And uh, we advised them to do some de 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 dismounting tests for uh, the ties, for instance, uh, to prove that it's possible to remove, to remove them. And then we contact some uh, reuse uh, dealers, reuse merchants that you can find on Monopolis to see if they, are inter if they are interested to reclaim some of the materials. And we list all of them. And this was yeah, before the, the construction. So we were helping the clients to uh, write the public tender to choose a demolition company that will reclaim the materials. Mm -hmm. So we give this information and help him to uh, define a, a reuse objective in the tender, in the public tender. Um, voilà, and give uh, all the information about wooden sharpened, uh, the wooden uh, frame and uh, the reuse uh, dealers that are uh, dealing with this kind of materials, for instance. And then we choose a demolition company, and this demolition company was in charge of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dismantling some elements and find finding some uh, um, reuse merchant. So this is a um, picture of the the construction site, so we talk with uh, him about um, the practice of the construction and where to stock and uh, etc. So they start to dismantle the, to remove the, the, the floor tiles. And he contacted this uh, reuse operator uh, in the uh, Netherlands that was interested to reclaim these tiles. Uh, it's, this is his web page, you know, like this kind of factors is not really visible on the internet, but in fact he's like a super professional of uh, like uh, treating sanitary, wood, etc., doors, and you can find a lot, a lot of uh, second-hand elements. And we, we wrote some uh, monitor monitoring documents to follow the deconstruction operation and the objectives, and this is uh, an estimation of uh, the number of tones, like 51 tons of materials that are going to be salvaged in, uh, in this uh, demolition uh, site. And at the end, the uh, reuse dealers send uh, a truck and uh, load the, the materials to be sailed in the uh, in Netherlands from Strasbourg. Mm. And the other, uh, it's uh, an ongoing project, and another uh, reuse company from Spain was interested to take the, the beam, the wooden beam, from the, the roof. This is uh, another story in London. So there was a, a client who wanted to build a slide, uh, slide house in between two houses, and the designer proposed to uh, design the facade with uh, bricks, uh, voilà, like that. So that was the design we originally designed. And we discussed with the designer and say, okay, maybe with, uh, you can find an alternative to new bricks. You keep your design, but you can use it, uh, you can do it with uh, second-hand uh, bricks. So we came 
uh, to visit some reuse dealer with uh, the clients, uh, with the, the designers, like in London, so the one specialized in bricks. Voilà, and then uh, he, he chose the good one and the good color he wanted because there is many offers. And we help him to write down the specification for the, the tender, for the, 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 the contractor. And then the contractor start to make a mock-up of the brick and uh, it's also ongoing. Uh, and he, he bought some second-hand bricks and start to make this facade instead with new bricks. He used local and we use one. Okay, to another story in Brussels. Uh, so there is uh, this uh, non-profit uh, organization called Zineke who organize a parade every, every two years and they were uh, designing, uh, they were uh, moving to a new place and we, we were designing the, the place with them so they had to uh, open this facade and, uh, to find, uh, and to find new windows uh, for the, the, this facade. So, like for every project now, we <laughs> prove that it's possible to work with second-hand merchants. And we find this, uh, we use, um, this uh, dealer uh, who sells second-hand windows. Um, Voilà, he gets a lot of information on site, which is much more easier to work with. Uh, but the issue is uh, the construction permit. So uh, during the construction permit, you need to give the information about the openings and the facade and the roof. So what we did was to create the maximum size of opening and to say to the administration, it could be one windows like that, two or three windows or a bigger one, etc. Because at the time where we look on, at the reclamation yard, the windows, and the time we, were, uh, we will uh, build the, the, the building, maybe it's, it's not going to be the same windows. So that was the, the way to answer to the administration uh, about the design of the facade. Of course, it's a, back, it's a backyard uh, facade. It's not uh, on the street, so it's more easily. And Again, the specification, we said like color, no, we don't care uh, any color possible. If we indicate too many uh, options, um, it's going to narrow the, the field of research. Dimension, maximum, this or this, minimum. Uh, and some of the, the, the features um, are required, like the energetic uh, performances etc. And then uh, the time for the construction, we asked to the, the, demolition, the construction company, uh, the contractor, uh, to select uh, some of windows and with them, and we, so we draw these windows and uh, do different uh, patterns, uh, test different uh, scenarios, choose one, and buy the windows, and more do some tricks with the, the windows. And so this project show also that it's possible to build a facade with second-hand windows. And this is the last project uh, in, uh, in uh, Brussels. It's a festival and the festival called us um, because they wanted to have a big roof to cover the parties, uh, debate, etc. And uh, as usually, we start to look at on the reuse market. Um, this time, we went on the Le Bon Coin, which is a second-hand uh, platform, web pla platform, where you can find a lot of uh, greenhouses for sale. Um, we find this one in Normandy, not so far from uh, Bruxelles, uh, for uh, four hours. Um, and so we decided to we propose to buy this one maybe two or three thousand uh, euros and to dismantle it and to build it uh, to install it in, in, in Brussels. So this is a, well, a video of the dismantling process. So it's like the architecture in reverse. You have to take care of which elements you dismantle first. Sometimes it's nails, sometimes you have to cut. Um, 
voilà, you need a lot of people, but it was also a real pleasure to do it. We do it uh, a weekend, uh, and everybody was uh, involved and like uh, it was during the COVID and like okay, super cool. And this is another uh, point of view where you can f see that uh, the dismantling process needs also some organization. You need to sort the element. You need to uh, write a, a dismantling note uh, to, uh, to install it again. And then to transport the materials to be installed in the new construction. Of course, every uh, second hand elements need to be adapt. Uh, here on site, you can see this uh, new part. Uh, so we we hire a bit up the, the, the structure and adapt to the this context. Um, and they had like uh, zero carbon, almost zero carbon, uh, huge roof for uh, parties or debate, uh, DJ, electro parties, uh, etc. Voilà. Thank you. So impressive, really exciting, like especially the drafting project, that's also why I want to know why. I think it's an amazing tool that you can use. Yeah, yeah I'm super happy that you came since, as I told you, like Alphalis was uh, one of uh, my first case studies, so I didn't know that yeah. <laughs> I had the chance to, to, to have you here. And uh, I'm interested in more in, in like one question that I have is uh, since it's really time consuming and uh, needs a lot of uh, uh, labor, so how uh, how you deal with the, the fact that uh, uh, I mean sometimes the construction also need uh, uh, like short time because they need to have uh, mm. demolish and uh, if you need a lot of people, how you Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes for other reasons, uh, it could be pollution, it could be uh, the speed of uh, construction. They want to build or demolish, to demolish quickly and build uh, faster because they're losing money if there is uh, no rent uh, as soon as possible. Um, most of time we, we find the gap between one week to three weeks before the tenants leave the building between the tenants leave the building and uh, the starting uh, the start of the demolition so we have like one to three weeks so it's like uh, i don't know if you know this uh, this uh, emission called fort boyard in france but it's like you open the door and you have to take a lot of things uh, yes. as, as fast as you can and like leave the doors sometimes it's a bit like that so we take the maximum of things we can uh, sometimes some precious elements uh, could worth it to spend a bit of time. Sometimes we are working with the demolition company and not only with the clients. Mm -hmm. And they know that they can save some uh, uh, containers, uh, some uh, rubbish. Um, so it takes more time, uh, but every project is a different context. And sometimes we get the time, sometimes not. And so we will focus on one element because we have one day, mm -hmm. the precious one. Mm -hmm. uh, voilà. And sometimes you need to hire uh, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I remember that one time we were maybe like 40 or 50 people in Rotor because there was like so many people on the building site. Mm -hmm. um, right. And how, how um, since uh, sometimes maybe you need a lot, a lot of working for it uh, and then the use material usually is cheaper so how you, you can like uh, uh, be like uh, economically be sustainable like uh, having a lot of people disassembling uh, to sell something that is cheap that will yeah well the question of uh, the value of a material is really strange because mm -hmm. sometimes you you buy wood uh, really cheap and nowadays it's like double the price yeah. sometimes you buy uh, materials uh, in your uh, provider like a huge quantity and your handle costs two euros and you go to this 
space and it's 20 euros. Mm -hmm. And also, um, can, um, how can we compare a second hand material with a new one? If it's a second hand floor, do you compare it to the generic one or to the FC, the forest uh, protected uh, labels uh, forest? So it's not the same price. Um, sometimes some elements, some con uh, construction elements uh, are uh, got a patin, a patina or and so they worth more than a new one. Sometimes they, they worth less than a new one, so like a uh, fake ceiling. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to, it's easy to dim dismantle, but it's, uh, you can uh, damage it mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of volume on the, on the stock. So it's quite impossible or really hard to uh, reuse this, uh, um, this uh, type of materials instead of some el elements are more precious. So the, the equation for rotor deconstruction is uh, dismantling don't mean that uh, it's reusable. You need to take the price of the demoli deconstruction uh, uh, operation mm -hmm. plus the transport uh, plus like uh, risk factors and it has to be equal or inferior to the, um, the, the price of the new materials. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also we get some materials that are, uh, um, I don't know how to say in English, but the produit d'appel. So like uh, this one is cheaper to make the, the clients come in the company to buy other stuff also. Ah, so like, like in every business and uh, mm -hmm. so, but of course, if we make wrong choice, if we stock uh, materials that we cannot sell, we are losing money because we invest money mm -hmm. in this uh, business. You have to invest money first mm -hmm. in people who dismantle and stock the materials and you get back your money when you sell it. Mm -hmm. So. It's why we are working more and more 50-50 uh, with the demolition company. So instead of us going on site, we ask to the demolition company to, to dismantle properly the, the materials uh, that we need. And so they invest uh, the, the money on uh, their uh, workers and we take the risk of not selling the materials and having in stock. And if we sell the materials, 50 for him, 50 for us. So it's like a risk management also between the, uh, the actors. And you ever try to um, advertise or sell the material before the deconstruction? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. So as you see, uh, some reuse audits, uh -huh. you can send some reuse audit to uh, reuse dealers or other clients. And sometimes the materials that you, you were not supposed to dismantle or uh, could be saved if someone say, okay, I'm interested by this one. But the fact is really hard to do, uh, to do it because most of time a client need at a precise time his uh, materials. So he say, I'm interested by these materials, but in three months, I say, okay, but the demolition is gonna be uh, next week. So who gonna stock in between? Or uh, it's why we, we start to work with this uh, reuse uh, industry, uh, these uh, reuse reclamation yards, because they are able to stock the materials and to do the buffer between the two different uh, construction sites, which is difficult to, to, to do with the online platform because. Uh, you need to take uh, at a precious time the, the, the materials. And, uh, yeah. So it's what's so exciting about this map is that you're also introducing a different, I don't know, sort of mindset to the consumer, to the customer when they see that there are all these options that they can look to and all these different alternatives. Yeah. And also the window experiment of like mm -hmm. pushing against the policy. Mm -hmm.
the example that you were showing about the hospital, where there is like a few materials and like they're starting to travel like very far, mm. that like they just don't um, do you keep doing that. Yeah, that's like how do you actually like it's kind of probably like a social network. How do you mm. find the people next to you like and get the things like next to you just without like, also minimizing the travel. But we we discover that. Uh, uh, circular economy uh, needs to change our view on building and it's mm -hmm. like a building stock mm -hmm. stock of materials yeah. the building is al also just like material stock for ages and uh, etc mm -hmm. but when you have to remove the stock you need to circulate this material to another place mm -hmm. so it's mainly about logistic and most of time we uh, clients are saying I don't want to buy uh, materials are that is coming from uh, Belgium or uh, Germany, etc. It's too far. We need to find a local solution. But the new material is coming from much more far away, in badly condition. And uh, the, the main, as you see uh, on, the, on the diagram, the main uh, energy embedded in the production of the material is the extraction, the production. Mm -hmm. So the transport, some of the materials, you can, you can send it uh, really far before the, 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 the CO2... Uh, uh, so fast because usually transportation kind of just takes a lot. Yeah, if maybe it depends. Yeah, yeah, it depends, but it depends mm -hmm. on the material. If, if you take stones, maybe you can travel 300 or 400 kilometers. Mm -hmm. If you take uh, like Trespa panel, high pressure laminate panels, mm -hmm. like the one, this one. Mm -hmm. This one is like... Uh, um, du, 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 like craft paper with uh, petrochimic uh, glue, high pressure uh, laminated, etc. And it's like resist to 200 degrees, uh, 200 uh, type of uh, chemical uh, product. It's like super strong, super man, and it's worth it to reuse it. But the, the bilan carbon, the, the carbon uh, embedded in, the, in this material is like hell so maybe this kind of board you can like make it travel uh, around the world before it uh, reached the, the what it consumed when it was produced so yeah it's just an image huh? but uh, some materials could could move like uh, in a radius of few kilometers and more and some of them can go uh, really far no, but you say if I understood correctly that you're trying to reach like at least with like already trying to produce this and then it's like to use the same CO2 to reproduce it, but it doesn't really mean you need like like with the transporting it, you don't try to um, achieve the same Yeah, of course, but it's it's still difficult to, to build with the second hand elements. So if you just narrow your uh, field of research in a really local uh, area it became a hell to and so mm -hmm. finally like Europe uh, it's quite local for uh, dealing of uh, construction materials regarding the industry of new materials that is worldwide and some research uh, show that uh, woods uh, second-hand woods coming from uh, uh, America by boats are uh, more in energy saving than new woods coming from by truck by uh, from uh, Romania or
Yeah, so it's, it's not our job to do this on, uh, in the consultancy. Um, sometimes we are a bit skeptical, skeptical, uh, skeptic, shit, blah, blah, blah. skeptical, it's difficult. Um, because it's, uh, it needs a lot of effort. So, so in, in some projects, it's a requirement. So if they are doing it, uh, why not? But uh, it's a lot of effort uh, to do it, and um, we we are careful about the, the, the price also of sustainable uh, sustainability in construction. So we we start from a really pragmatic approach of saying, okay, this is second-hand materials. It's uh, stones that were installed uh, 50 years ago in Burgundy. It's knowing every. Uh, every winter in Burgundy, so there is no issue with the uh, uh, le gel, with the fresh uh, that can crush the, the, the stone, so you can use it, there is no problem, and that's it. Uh, and sometimes we don't know the, 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 the previous uh, use of the materials, so it's quite hard sometimes to, to know uh, where it comes from. Uh, so, we try to, to, to be as light as we can when we uh, uh, give advice or uh, for the use of uh, construction element. Like for instance, there is a debate between the loss of performance of all the materials in the building. So some uh, engineers wanted to uh, assess all the, the, the performance that were loose. And other engineer decided to say, okay, but we don't care about uh, knowing the loss of this material if we don't use it uh, and so they were more talk, you more talk about fitness for use. So if you want to use this uh, uh, swimming pool ties on the wall, you don't care about the surface, uh, if it's uh, uh, sliding or not. You just want to know if it's fit on the, on, the, on the wall. So it means that in every step of reuse practice, we, we have to be care about uh, how simple or low tech could be the, the, the assessment mm -hmm. to keep it really low because the margin in, in, uh, in reuse process are, are really uh, really difficult and uh, voila if you want to assess the, the performance of a wooden beam some of them would try to scan 3D the stuff but it needs to uh, a lot of energy with computer and some of the other one get uh, like a sound system testing and like just in, in one uh, with a one hand tools you can know if your beam is okay or maybe just knocking the, the beam could be enough so this is a debate about being low soft a soft approach of in every step no, I was thinking more about, about, about uh, having a database of, uh, like, I don't know, like for example, the, the brick facade. Mm -hmm. So since you're, you're already uh, speaking with the client and you, you know that it's happening, it's there. So having, I don't know, just a database uh, saying uh, uh, this uh, building is using um, 4,000 bricks and having all those, all those information somewhere so like uh, if you they want to dis to disassemble you already know that it's a data like you have a storage of 3000 bricks or yeah, well, 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 then, yeah. then the data you have to make some tests uh, as you 